Hi there, folks, and welcome to this latest edition of the Oshkosh Capital Connection, an opportunity for you to hear from your local state lawmakers about what's going on in Madison and why it's important to you here in Oshkosh. Today we welcome the Assembly Minority Leader, Representative Gordon Hintz of the 54th District to the Oshkosh Media Studio. Representative Hintz, thank you very much for being with us. Good, good to be back. So we talked a little bit before we got going here. Uh, the budget, budget season is over, so now you just cool your heels, right? Not a, not a whole lot going on, but uh, what, uh, what, what's going on down there? Not so fast. <laughs> um, well, I mean, the budget is a big part of everything that state government does. Every two years, you know, we do a budget, so everything from schools, universities, prisons, highways, and health care, um, about 80% of what the big programs are and everything from um, local services are impacted by what the state does. But we have a session that goes till April, um, and there are no shortage of issues that the state is dealing with, that people in the state are dealing with, that I think there's a role for government to play in. And some want to just go home and say we're done, um, but I think we've got an obligation to uh, work, uh, show up, have hearings, try to move ideas, and uh, work right up until the end of April. You have office hours here in the community. You come in and talk to us. You're very active on social media. What kinds of things do you hear about from people who live here in Oshkosh? You're, you're involved in the, the, the leadership uh, for your party down in Madison, and obviously that comes with a, a vast list of responsibilities down there. But when you, when you get time to get back here home, what are, you, what are you hearing? What's important to folks here in the community? It's, you know, it's a lot of kitchen table issues. Um, Health care costs, um, which are national but also a state issue. Uh, for some, it's health care access still, which is another reason we support the Medicaid expansion and continue to make that case that um, 37 other states have decided to do. Um, child care costs, um, wages. Uh, the reality is, even though we're in the longest period of economic expansion in our nation's history, um, it's really been concentrated at the top, and with the erosion of some of the good paying jobs and the sort of service sector jobs out there, even with the labor shortage, um, we're seeing a lot of people um, on the margins that are just one medical bill, one car accident, one um, you know, incident away from you know, losing their home and other things. And I think we've seen that um, in a number of studies come up that there are just still a lot of people struggling, living on the margins where uh, it's got to be more on our radar. Uh, I think sometimes, oh, the economy's great or my investments are great. Um, there's a lot of people in our community that are struggling. I know the school district has highlighted that we still have um, you know, a large number of children uh, living in poverty that are at a disadvantage. One issue that has come up uh, here in Oshkosh that has also been debated down in the state capitol is the dark store issue, or the dark store loophole issue. Yeah. Uh, most folks have heard of it. Uh, it's happened here in town. Um, is there any bipartisan movement on this? We've heard a little bit about folks talking about it, but is yeah. there anything different than months ago? So this is an issue that Oshkosh has been one of the faces of because we were one of the uh, original court decisions, but we've continued to be penalized by assessments that have shifted uh, the tax base to uh, residential homeowners and small businesses. And I think the public basically understands what the issue is. Um, there is bipartisan support. There was a hearing two years ago. It looked like we were going to get action given that higher property taxes is the consequence and uh, nobody wants that. Um, it seems to be a non-starter right now. I think the um, big box retailers have kind of had their way. They're probably more campaign finance active than um, you know, municipalities, and uh, it's disappointing. I think that's one of the issues we need to act on. The sponsors of the bill are very conservative Republicans who do commercial development, um, but they recognize that if we don't act, we're saying it's okay uh, to use city services to pay less than what the assessment is, and that means the tax base continues to shift to people who may be on fixed income, uh, smaller businesses that don't have attorneys that are able to sue the city, uh, and we're going to bring it up, but I'm, I'm not confident. Uh, it's, we're recording this in the beginning of November. You've got a town hall coming up at Traeger Elementary School on November 18th. Um, when you hold events like that, uh, what, what, what are, I guess I kind of asked you this already about what the trends are, what you hear in the community, but what is it like to kind of stand up in front of folks and, and at some times, I'm assuming, have them kind of just fire either complaints or questions or that's that's the job so what are those things like and how do you how do you use those to go back to madison and then and take action um well uh it's part of the job and you're right um you get a little bit of everything although i have to say i mean people whether they're supportive or not or whether we disagree or not have always been great um i've got some really friendly critics 
uh, who are more than happy to come share their opinions on issues and I encourage people to come out that's what it's for you can come out and just listen if you don't want to talk and you can follow up individually with a letter or just grab my attention um, I really want to hear from people I don't want to talk at them um, I don't want to you know I'll certainly answer questions I think we're gonna have some slides ready to answer um, I'm happy to give an update on things that are happening but it's really an opportunity for people to ask questions and for those that are in attendance to hear other people ask questions in my other town halls or office hours it's a lot of the conversation that follows off of questions that um, I think helps everybody learn more about things and um, I always come away with something new that I didn't know or an answer that I have to get back to people on because I'm just not not sure about it but it helps me humanize the issues that are out there and localize their impact that one-on-one -on -one face contact is important because I think that and you might agree the uh, the culture and the way people talk to each other online is obviously very different than the way that they talk to you when you're standing in front of them and they realize there's a person behind that Facebook account or there's a person behind that that person they see on TV who just wants to help and, and work and this is the reason why you why you take this job and run for election yeah and you know I'm not in Congress or even the state Senate I think um, one of the nice things at the assembly level and for me just representing Oshkosh is is the you know personal interaction if I go to pick and save or festival or pig um, I'm gonna run into somebody and if they have questions or want to talk I, I'm, I'm gonna do it um, that means I may not I to tell my wife I might not be home uh, <laughs> unless I go Saturday night at 10 o'clock um, you know but that's the opportunity that you take because you want to be accessible to people and it's kind of one of the luxuries I think in our system where they feel distant or disconnected that you can be involved in the community you can knock on doors you can see people um, and I think feel connected I mean it's always important to stay in touch I think we all feel sometimes uh, DC politicians are not always in touch with what's happening on the ground um, is talking about getting the word out there and reaching out to people. You've got a podcast up and running now. It's uh, hashtag some assembly required. Uh, how's that going? How's the response been to that? Um, well, it's been fun. Uh, my staff set it up, but uh, you know, a lot of the challenge we have right now with kind of declining media, you know, newspaper not color covering as much is, you know, how do you get information to the public? And we created some assembly required to kind of highlight the issues that we're working on, but also give some of our members. Um, the opportunity to kind of talk about them, you know, the work, why they ran for office, humanize things, and then we ask, ask them some fun questions that allow them to demonstrate their personality. We had Governor Evers on the other day um, in a segment I think was good, but it's about creating content and trying to get information out there, perhaps in a way that's more accessible and not as alienating as some of the news or cynical politics are. Today's Veterans Day. I mentioned that we were recording this in early November, so for the folks who are watching on demand or as a replay, Veterans Day today, I, I saw you at Oshkosh North at the ceremony there. I know you were at the YMCA here in Oshkosh before that. Does Veterans Day, now that you're a lawmaker and you've been elected and perhaps you're even closer to events like this or being invited to more events like this, does Veterans Day take on an even greater meaning, meaning excuse me, when you're a lawmaker and you get these opportunities? Or Talk about how important Veterans Day is and then to you, what does it mean as a lawmaker yeah. to show up to those things? Um, you know, while I thought I always valued it, certainly since I've been sworn into office, um, you know, every sort of event that is a recommitment from the Pledge of Allegiance to the National Anthem, and then certainly when you look in the eyes and meet with the men and women who served, that you have to understand we only can do what we do uh, because of people that um, have stepped up uh, to serve. Uh, I always say to people that run for office, the biggest decision is deciding to run for office. Well, that obviously doesn't compare. I mean, the idea that you're going to step forward and make a commitment to your country, uh, to your colleagues, you're going to work as part of a team above anything else is, uh, is a significant commitment that, you know, a lot of us don't know if, you know, we didn't make, but um, seeing the different generations of people on a day like today um, and the bond that they have that only they can uh, share and experience is, is special and I, I'm glad that we have so many community events that um, recognize their service and, uh, and I'm grateful for that. Mm -hmm. Well said. So to wrap this up, I want to say thank you once again for you for stopping in. If folks do want to get in contact with you, phone number, Facebook, email, what's the best way to, to contact you? All host? of the above. Um, like I said, the same kind of personal connection. I read my emails. Um, you know, my staff may answer the message and get it to me. Um, 
you know, those things are all good. We have content out there, so if you follow us on Twitter or Facebook, um, that's a good way to stay informed of some of the things we're doing in the district, some of the issues that are out there. Um, but it, there's many ways to get a hold of us. Sometimes people send me personal messages on Facebook that my staff always gets grumpy. So, um, you know, my email address is probably the best way online to reach me. We'll always get back to you um, in short order and i um, happy to call you back personally. Perfect. Representative Hens, thank you once again for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me. And thank you all for just getting plugged in here on the Oshkosh Capital Connection. Please check us out on Oshkosh Media on Facebook, YouTube to watch and share the Oshkosh Capital Connect Connection, other programs and government updates as well. You can also watch us on Spectrum Cable Channel 10, AT&T U-verse Channel 99. Check us out on Apple TV or Roku live streaming and live streaming on OshkoshMedia.org. So once again, thank you all for joining us on the Oshkosh Capital Connection, and we'll see you next time.